Okay, so in the introduction, we discussed the cloud technology that we're going to be using to store our photos, and we discussed the reasons why as well. And by storing our images in the cloud, then we free ourselves from needing to do this either in our file system or doing it in something like our database, where space could be a concern in both instances. And by using a cloud service, this allows us more flexibility where we host our application in the end. And an excellent one to use where we get a very generous free tier is Cloudinary. And this is what we'll be using for testing. So what you'll need to do is go to cloudinary.com and sign up to this. It's completely free. You do not need to enter any credit card details, but you do, of course, need an email address. And you will need to verify your email address before you can actually upload images into Cloudinary. So please take care of these steps and get to this stage where we're on the dashboard. And on the dashboard, we have our account details. And what we need to configure in Cloudinary is our cloud name, the API key, and also the API secret. And along with this free plan, then we get 10 gigabytes worth of storage, 20,000 image transformations, and 20 gigs worth of bandwidth. So a very, very generous free tier, which will be more than adequate for what we're doing on this course. Now, what we also get with Cloudinary is .NET integration with this. And if we go to our quick links over here and click on Microsoft.NET, then this will take us to the .NET SDK that we're going to be using to allow our users to upload images via our API to then be sent up to Cloudinary. Now the documentation is pretty good. We get some examples of how to use this and what to do with this. And we can transform our images when we send them up and we can crop them. We can specify that we want the gravity to be focused on the face and we can give it height and width properties as well. Perfect, this is just what we're looking for. And we can also, of course, upload files into Cloudinary and there's an example of how we can do this here. And what we also do, or what we can also get, is a cloudinary.net package, a NuGet package to install into our app, and also an example of how we specify the configuration and how we create this inside here. But we're going to cover all of this. But do please do take a look at the documentation for anything that's not covered that you want to do with images in Cloudinary that we're not covering on this course. We'll cover a fair amount, but not everything about everything. So let's head back to VS Code and we're going to start configuring Cloudinary in our app. And the first thing we'll do is we'll open up our NuGet gallery and let's just take a look for Cloudinary. So I'll search for Cloudinary and we can see Cloudinary.net in the list. Now this is going to be added to our infrastructure project. Image uploads is a cross cutting concern. We're only going to use it in one place but we're going to have methods to allow us to upload images to Cloudinary and delete images from Cloudinary inside our infrastructure project. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and install this. And that was successful. So what we'll do is we need to give our application the configuration settings that we just looked at in Cloudinary. And we need our Cloudinary cloud name, the API key, and the API secret. Now, up to this point in the API, I've been using the app settings development.json because I literally don't care if this information is out there on the internet. Who cares what I've called my SQLite DB? I don't care. Nobody else can care. What can they do with that information? Now, if I was <laughs> going to use super secret key for my actual token key in production, this would be a problem. But because this is in our development.json file, when it comes to publishing, we'll have a, a separate configuration key for our token key to our development one. So it's not going to be this. And like I say, I do not care what's inside here. The app settings.json is different. This one we have excluded from our GitHub or our Git repository. And anything that we put in here, we can consider to be secret information. Now, what we'll do is we'll specify our Cloudinary settings in here, and I'll give it a configuration key of Cloudinary. And then we're going to have our cloud name. And I'll just put an empty string in for now. We'll need our API key. 
Again, I'll just do an empty string for now. And we'll also need our API secret. Again, with an empty string. Now, I'm just going to go across to the Cloudinary dashboard once again. And I need to populate those fields with this information. The cloud name, obviously set to the cloud name. The API key, obviously set to the API key, along with the API secret. So I'm going to do this, pause the video and come back once I've put it in. But please go ahead and populate your settings in your appsettings.json file. So yours should look something like this. Please use your own Cloudinary account. You won't be able to use mine because I've blurred out the API secrets. So now that we have that in place, what we're going to do is strongly type our Cloudinary settings or configuration there. And what we'll do inside our infrastructure project, we'll create a new folder called Photos. And we'll create a new c -sharp class and we'll call it Cloudinary Settings. And what we'll do in here is we'll add the configuration properties for each of the keys that we have there. So we've got the string of the cloud name and we have a string for the API key and we have a string for the API secret. And what this means is that we'll be able to use our Cloudinary settings to get access to the values of the cloud name, the API key and the API secret where we need to use them. But what we also need to do when we strongly type our configuration settings like this, we need to go to our startup class, but we're putting all of this information in our application service extensions in order to keep our startup class tidy. And inside here, what we'll do is we'll come down just before we're returning the services and we're gonna say services.configure and then we pass in the type that we've created. So it's gonna be Cloudinary settings and we'll need to go ahead and bring this in from infrastructure photos and then we pass the configuration to this method and we're going to get this from our config and we're going to say get section and we're going to specify cloudinary and of course this needs to match exactly what you called your section inside your app settings.json file so now that we've got our configuration added, what we'll take a look at next is adding the Cloudinary interfaces to upload and delete a photo.